So as a filmmaker and editor, sometimes making your editing workflow faster isn't just about knowing a bunch of key bindings or how to make some cool trendy effect. In some cases, there are things that are a lot more subtle that still have a huge impact on how quickly you can get things done. So in this video, we're talking about a few DaVinci Resolve tricks that are really useful, but no one talks about. And one of these, I really believe that it can be a huge time saver for a lot of people, while the others are more just like smaller quality of life things that add up over time. And if you start using all of these, I am pretty sure that you can make your editing workflow a lot faster. So first up, I want to show you how to make your own custom project templates with all of the bins and timelines and other organizational things that you need inside of them. And I'm also going to show you a few cool tricks that you can do with these as well. When you first open up Resolve, you want to go ahead and create a new project. Name it template, or if you plan on having a few different template projects for different types of videos that you work on, you can name it template and then some additional name to be able to tell them apart. For example, I've got a template for my YouTube videos and one that's for all of my other filmmaking work and each of them is set up in a slightly different way. Then once you've done that, you can go to the bottom right settings button and change any of the overall project settings that you want. So set all of this up in a way that fits what you're doing. To be completely honest, I haven't bothered changing a lot of these settings in here and things work just fine. When you're done with the settings, you can go ahead and start creating bins in the master section of your media pool. These are the ones that I have set up. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. You can make this as simple or as complicated as you want with more or less bins. I've also made sure to throw in numbers from one to six for these because that way they're all in order when I sort them by name. You can also go ahead and create timelines that are set up in whatever way you usually use them. For example, you can have one 4K horizontal timeline that you use for YouTube videos and one vertical timeline for stuff that you make for social media. To take things one step further, you can go into each of the timelines and start adding as many video and audio tracks as you need and renaming them so you can know what each of them is meant for. To make this step even more useful, you can go ahead and start applying different effects and settings to each of the tracks. For example, in my YouTube template, I've set up my timeline to have two audio tracks. The first one is for my vocals, and the second one is for my background music. I've applied the settings I usually use for my vocals onto the first track. I've also dropped the audio levels on the background music track to what I normally have it at. So I'm not going to go any deeper with the examples because there are just infinite ways that you can set up one of these custom templates. The whole point of this piece of advice is that you should set things up in a way that's comfortable and convenient for what you need it for. Once you're done dialing everything in, make sure to hit Ctrl and S to save the template project itself, and then you can go ahead and close Resolve. Now, the next time when you want to use your template, instead of double clicking to open it, what you do is you right click on it and click on open in read only mode. That's essentially going to open up an identical copy of your template, but when you hit Ctrl S again, instead of overriding your original template, Resolve will basically create a new project that's the same as your template, and you'll be able to give it a name matching the project that you're working on, while still keeping the original template project unchanged. Now you're pretty much able to keep all of your future projects organized in the exact same way as each other with all of the timelines and tracks inside them having the same settings and effects applied. This should be a huge time saver because it takes out the need to constantly be doing the same repetitive tasks over and over again from scratch for every single project. The next thing I want to show you is called dynamic project switching. To enable it, when you launch Resolve before opening any project, you can right click somewhere in the empty space and make sure that dynamic project switching is checked. Now, when you already have a project open and want to open another one, instead of having to close down one of them to open the other, you can just open both up at the same time and by using the drop down menu at the very top, you can choose which project you're actually looking at. The reason this is helpful is, for example, if you're working on a new video but you want to reference something from an older one. Sometimes I'll want to include parts of a sequence that I filmed for a project when I'm explaining something in a YouTube video. Instead of having to find the source files for the clips in that sequence, then importing them into my current project and spending a bunch of time cutting them down and color grading exactly how I need them, I can just open the project that the sequence was originally in and copy what I need from there, then use the dynamic project switching dropdown and go and paste it into my current project. 
Using this trick, you're essentially able to carry over stuff from one project to another without having to spend the time to wait for one of the projects to close down before you can open the other one. Just keep in mind that the more projects you have open at the same time, the slower your computer is gonna run. So unless you really need to be using this trick, don't go overboard with it and don't just have a bunch of projects randomly open for no reason. The next one is also a quality of life trick and it's having your selected clip in the timeline be highlighted in the media pool. To set this up, you go to DaVinci Resolve in the top left and then Preferences, then under User and in the Editing tab. When you scroll down, you should see Always Highlight Current Clip in the Media Pool. When you have this checked, anytime you select a clip on your timeline, the Media Pool will automatically update and highlight the clip showing whatever bin the source file is in. The reason this can be helpful is because sometimes you might be working on an edit and you feel like everything looks good, but then when you're watching it back, you realize that a clip you used might not be the best and you want to use another take that you shot. Instead of having to look through all of your bins and trying to find where all of the takes are for that specific shot, you can just click on the clip that you've already used on the timeline and it will show it in the media pool. Now, unless you've got some weird organization method you use, I'm willing to guess that all of the takes for that shot will be right next to each other along with the selected one. Now, you can just pick one that works better and use that instead. This trick basically makes it easier for you to keep track of whatever you've already used in your timeline in case you need to replace it later, or at least that's what I use it for. Another quality of life trick is using the match frame function. Basically, what this allows you to do is click on any clip in the timeline and by hitting F, you can open the source media for it in your preview window. The reason this one is useful is in situations where you might have unlinked the audio and video tracks of a clip and you end up losing one of them while editing. If that happens, instead of having to drag the entire clip back into your timeline from the media pool and cutting it down to what it was like before, you can just hit F and bring it up in the preview tab. Now, by using one of these two icons, you can either drag just the missing video or the audio into your timeline. And the cool part is, it's only going to drag in the same length of the clip as the one that's already on your timeline, meaning that you don't have to worry about dragging in the entire audio track and having to figure out which part matches the video track that's left in your timeline. It automatically lets you drag in just the part that you need. So keep in mind that the explanations that I gave for these tricks are how I use them, but that's definitely not the only way that they can work. So if you figure out any other clever ways that you can do things with these, you can let me know by dropping a comment. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, I just want to say thank you because it means a lot. Consider sticking around by subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.